Hello everyone and welcome to this new video where I will talk about what is possibly my favorite play of all time. Every now and then people ask me if like I was impacted by a game that I saw or what is my favorite game of all time. And while I do have some battles that come to mind, the thing that actually stick with me after all this time is this particular play. It really left an impact of me both when it happened and still to this day. So I will dedicate a whole video to it. Before diving into the meat of the subject, I will take 2 seconds to plug in my stream. I've been streaming for 2 weeks now, I mainly record myself playing like non-Pokemon games in French, and I try to catch every important game that happen within Smogon tournaments and narrate them in English. I also plan to stream like suspect lettering, all gen lettering, all kind of things regularly. So yeah, I mainly like try to stream rather than record videos but I will try to do those. Anyway, enough about this self-promotion and let's get back to the subject. So to set the context of this game, it happened more than 8 years ago now. Exactly it was on the 5th of August 2012. It was a battle for the World Cup of the time between a Brazilian player known as Ruber and Blue playing for US West. So before like getting into the battle and the play in question, I will also like present the teams that I because I've remade the teams with the information available from the replay that I watched live at the time by the way. And I've recreated the battle to have something a PS replay to work with, which is better like to to have visual indicators and explain why that play was so good in my eyes and why and what you can learn from it actually. So, yep. So, before getting started, I will just already say that the person who made the play in that game was Ruber. So, we will uh, like analyze the game from his perspective. And to better understand his reasoning and why the play was so good, we have to know the team he was using. So, I've recorded it on showdown with the information I had on this position. There we go. So here we have what it was possibly we were still. The, oh, they were playing black and white, I forgot to mention that. You could have maybe recognized the radio from the sprite. It was black and white one, by the way. So we were at the standard stealth rock for a trace of the, t of the time. I didn't put any EVs, but it was most likely max HP and max special defense. He had the Salamence. I, we don't know if it was Scarf or Life Orb, but it didn't have Intimidate, so I'm inclined to think it was Scarf. Keep in mind this information, by the way. He had a standard Watom Wash, a standard Celebi of the time, which was good against Rain in general and Watom in particular, Leaf Storm, HP Fire, Usual Recover, usually with max special attack or max special defense. He had a choice band character, keep in mind it was choice band. Important information is that based on the team structure, could be, it could be Scar from uh, like the opponent's perspective, and Scarf was a more popular set too. Finally, he had the left Leftovers Landorus Incarnate, prior to its ban. Uh, the fact that it had Leftovers makes me think it might have been a setup sweeper, so like Sword Dance or Rock Polish, but we don't know that. He just used Earthquake in the battle. And now we are g I'm showing Blue's team, so Blue was using uh, Mix Mian Chao, that is still used the same way nowadays. So it was Regenerator Life Orb for attacks. Keep in mind that Mian Chao picks at this speed stat, which is basically faster than everything Ruru has on this team, unless he has a choice golfer. He had a Balloon Stealth Rock Tran. Those uh, each one usually run max speed, max spell attack, or just bulky spreads. He had the Rotom Mo, which used this set. So this wasn't the popular Rotom, but it had a very good matchup against Rotom Rush. And it did like okay against Rain and Sand too, so not a popular pick, but a good one nonetheless. He did use all these moves in the battle, that's why it had it has the full moveset. Oh, I forgot to mention that Blue. Uh, well, I didn't mean to miss gender, but yeah, Blue uh, was supposedly a girl, so I'm gonna use she from now. Anyway, so Blue also had a regular Slowbro, Max Defang, Max HP. Scarf Writer and Choice Ben Sizer. 
all popular sets at the time beside the Rotom, which you could you didn't see much, but yeah, turned up with it in the battle. So now we're actually moving back to the to the fight, going back to replay mode, and yeah, let's get started. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna analyze the game from Ura's perspective, and I'm just gonna go gonna do a quick turn by turn analysis, nothing too deep, until we get to the actual play that the video is made about, why it was good and what you can learn from it. So the big thing to take off from the battle preview is that Ruhr is very, very weak to Mian Xiao. Basically Mian Xiao is faster than everything on the team, unless something is carved. It also one shot Landorus with HPIs, one shot Titar, probably close to one shot Celebi with U-turn. Uh, Rotom doesn't need much chip damage to be in HJK range. Fortress usually get chipped because it has to wrap to stealth stroke and twice to spin. And it isn't really an offensive threat in general, so yeah. And you have Salamence, which like could possibly be Scarf. Because well what we know from Rura's side is that most likely the Salamence was Scarf, or if it wasn't, it was the only possibility. The thing is if you have to rely on Salamence to take out Nian Shao, well you're probably taking rocks, sand, and possibly have to lock yourself on outrage. And if you do so, and they just like and blue just keeps Mian Chao by switching out, uh, you're probably dying to size or slow bro. So yeah, the Mian Chao the Mian Chao matchup is looking very tough, and we'll see how we were handled it. So the game starts, and Fortress is leading against Mian Chao. You can already see some insane damage. Uh, thankfully, I was able to recreate. I didn't get to recreate the battle like down to the exact damage roll, but I didn't get any crit or anything that impacted the game up at, up until uh, the play I'm trying to showcase. So yeah, let's just act like those were the actual damage rolls. So life of Adjun Kick is too caring for Fortress from the get-go in exchange for rocks. Fortress already cannot stay in anymore, and if Salamence has to switch into AJK, it's taking rocks damage. Uh, it's taking well, you're gonna see in the next turn because. Since everything else is slower, as we know from Ruler's perspective, you don't really have a better answer than going straight Salamence. But AJK did a shit ton, as you can see, 54, that's a clean to KO Salamence. Either, well, Ruler is using the Salamence threat, and the fact that Blue probably wanna keep uh, Mian Chao because it's such it's so good against Ruler's team. So she's gonna preserve it, and he's just Ruler is just carrying it out by sending Salamence. But you may already notice that Ruhr cannot send Salamence in front of Mian Shao on an high jump kick anymore already. And keep in mind that Mian Shao has fake out like we've seen earlier. So each run goes to his air balloon tran to get the rocks up and because it's a pretty safe play against Salamence in general, and Ruhr double to Rotom. Rotom used Vol Switch and faced the Rotom, like the Rotom uh, mo Oh, is it? Yeah, it's more right. So from Lu, which did basically nothing. The trading HP fires. So Blue didn't crit in the actual battle, but it actually doesn't really matter. You will see how it played out. So Zabu's doing a good amount of damage. Rural Celebi was faster. You turned out to Tyranitar. Maybe try to to get it on. Uh, well, I don't know exactly why, but it was a solid mid ground. But Blue actually paint split that turn to heal the Rotom back because it's pretty good too. Tried to kill the Tyranitar, but Leaf Storm. So at this point, keep in mind that Blue doesn't know the choice card for Moore. It could be all of Landorus, Salamence, or Tyranitar. Because those are the most likely choice Celebi and Rotom. Are pretty much always leftovers, and Celebi already showed it was leftovers. So Celebi is tanking the, those hits, it's gonna recover. So this is on turn 9, Mian Chao is back, and we can already see how threatening it is because Rotom C just gets Mian Chao safely on the field with Blood Switch, and now Celebi is, is like must be kept for probably must pretty, pretty much has to be kept for both Slowbro and uh, Rotom C. And yeah, U turn just returns the kill and it's faster than everything. So, Ford, 
Blue doesn't have a safe a, a switch to Mianchao, so he's just sending his fortress to the death since it already took an AJK. And it can take U turn, like the predicted U turn on Celebi. So Boo is getting his Ultran on uh, the fortress and just gonna get the rocks up. Rotom W comes in. So far, nothing special. You can. The main, the main thing to keep in mind, based on how the game is playing out so far, is that Mian Chao is a big threat and Rura doesn't really have an answer to it anymore. Keep in mind that we know Rura's team, right? So we are playing as Rura, and we know we do not have a good answer to Mian Chao. We know that our only possible outspeeding Pokémon at this point is Salamence, and Rocks are on the field and it's gonna be really hard. It's gonna be pretty much impossible to take them off with the Fortress already at 55% after Rocks. So at this point you might you might think, well, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this Vian Shao. I might just forfeit already. But that's you can guess that something special is gonna happen. Well, maybe not special, but it was special for me. So blue right now is just healing the Rotom through pain splits, while which also gets to keep the Celebi low and force it forces it to recover. V you can repeat the the loop from earlier, Volt Switch into Mian Chao. And Mian Chao now returns a U-turn kill. If it doesn't kill something with U-turn, it's just gonna kill whatever comes next with its next move. So Blue really wanna keep Mian Chao, right? So strong right now. Blue is trying his best to not die to Volt Switch Mian Chao loops and goes land the risk on the Volt Switch. So one piece, of, one piece of information from Blue's side is that by switching Landorus on the boss switch here, Landorus reveals to be Leftovers variants, so it's not choice here. At this point, the only possible Pokémon that could outspeed Mian Chao is Mets, who is like, who can only come once and is gonna die the next time to rocks, and Taraitao could be choice card. But choice card Taraitao isn't really a big threat to, to Mian Chao, right? What can you... At worst, you can treat him as Super Power, and they're just food for Sizor to keep him turning and bullet punching. So they are just playing pretty standard for now. Blue has the advantage of a rule to me and Shao. Really, though he's doing his best to prevent it from coming in the field safely. For example, when he went Landorus on Ball Switch. It prevented Blue from getting a safe ball switch into Miancho again. Sadly, even even with Sand Force, Lobro is really taking the earthquakes like a champ. Uh, this Blue just threw a safe scald. He has regenerator. She has regenerator to to stay healthy anyway. So with this ball switch, the Rotom is pretty much confirmed to die. So in the actual battle, it was higher than 11%, but it was pretty much dead anyway. The thing is, Mian Chao just straight up rained so far. That was a really great Celebi switch from Rose's side to, to heal it. Okay. Alright, so I'm just gonna go back a single turn because we're getting to the meat of the subject. So Rura has been playing pretty clever to prevent Mian Chao from repeatedly coming in the field and claiming a soul every time. And Blue realized, realized this and made the clever play of switching. So, okay, let me. So we went. She went. Uh, yeah, she went size all. On the expected recover from Celebi. Alright, so let's go back. Going Sizor. At this point, you have to expect HP Fire, it was the popular set of the time. And that's a good bait because by baiting, by sending Sizor, you pretty much force the Celebi to use HP Fire, and that's a good point of uh, entry from, uh, for Mian Chao to come in. But Rural knowing that made the U turn play. So, how is Rura gonna deal with Mian Chao from now? The thing is, you can send Salamence, because Salamence is probably outspeeding and killing Mian Chao, right? But the thing is, Salamence is gonna take rocks, and Blue isn't gonna stay in. 
not to mention that since this is Mian Shao's first turn on the field, Mian Shao can just fake out the Salamence and kill it. And whatever comes next is just gonna die. If you... Well, one line of play from Ruber could be to send a Tyranitar. Because as, as it stands... Okay, I'm just gonna reveal a Calc. So yeah. So the only two possible options at this point is sending either Salamence or Tyranitar. The problem is that as you send Salamence, uh, if you send Tyranitar to like trick Blue into thinking that the Tyranitar is carved, uh, let me. Ch so I'm gonna pause the damage card. So this is choice carved damage against me and Shell. First of all, Super Poro is only a roll, and the thing is, Blue can just safely switch out of uh, of Tyranitar and check the move set. He has a full life Slowbro, he can just send even like Scyzor or even each run. So yeah, Blue can just check the moveset and if it just Scarf, he has counter play and he will know that like he can he won't risk his Mianchao further into the game. And the problem is that Salamence can only come once. So what is Rura gonna do? I'm gonna show you. So he sent Salamence. By sending Salamence, he forces Blue to use fake out, and I mean, if you win blues in, in blues uh, feet, like in blue spot, sorry, you would definitely use fake out, right? It's very, really, it's very much free. You know, you are killing Salamence. At worst, the Salamence is switching out, and if it switch, switches out, it cannot come in anymore because of stealth work. So that that's what it that's what she did. Blue clicks fake work, fake fake out, sorry, and we were sent her right down. So now there is one like the fact that. Ruber sent Salamence first instead of Tyranitar is very clever and this is why. So let's say Ruber sent Tyranitar first. The Mian Shao would be 16% earthier from he wouldn't have taken this extra round of life orb and he wouldn't have taken this extra round of left orb uh, of send damage. So the Mian Shao would actually be at 75%. And the big thing is Let's say you send Scarf Tyranitar. You could technically use Pursuit, right? But as you can see from the damage calc, Scarf Tyranitar Pursuit, if the Mian Chao is switching out, which is likely to which it would likely be doing, because you wanna keep Mian Chao's in blue spot, because it's so good against Rust team. Well the crunch, or the pursuit in this case, would only cap at 44% damage. So it's it's not dead, and Mian Chao and Regi as Regenerator. Right? Okay, actually this is carb damage. <laughs> Forgot to mention. Now we are showing Choice Band damage. So this is Choice Band damage. Ruber knows he has Choice Band Tyranitar. And he knows that if he can possibly pursue the Mian Chao somehow, Pursuit from Choice Band Tyranitar on a switch out would cap at, well, crunch damage. So at 72. And the Mian Chao currently is at 75, without taking that extra turn of life orb and send damage. So even if you make the clever play of, of sending Tyranita instead of Salamence, and let's say you manage to like to bait Blue into thinking this is a scarf Tyranita, you could pursue the, the Mian Chao and the Mian Chao is gonna take is gonna isn't gonna die. Oh well, no, it's actually never gonna die. It's just gonna heal from regenerate of 33 percent. By sending Salamence first now, you bait me and into using fake out. And now it took 16% damage more. It's at it's at 69. And Choice Band Pursuit on a switch is gonna do at least at least 61, which is the crunch damage. Because this is basically pursuit like uh, twice the pursuit twice the pursuit damage. And with all this maneuver, we were still managed to like hide the fact that his Tyranitar was not scarfed to begin with. It was actually choice band. And thanks to this very clever maneuver, we were managed to condition Blue into making this play this fake out to pursue it with choice band Tyranitar and managed to remove me and Chao from the game. And honestly, the whole maneuver was like so clever in my eyes because you don't really think necessarily about like sending me and, me and uh, Salamence first 
and then switching out the tier writer exactly but because like let's say you could stain with the uh, with salamence right but it's so clever to switch tarantha out exactly because you could also make it seem like you were making sure that the Mian Shao isn't super power damage from Scar. Yeah, that, like that's so clever on multiple levels. And not only that, you also actually get to keep a Salamence sack for later. Instead of just letting the Salamence die. You waited the perfect for like for a perfect opportunity to do this. He couldn't send Tarita first. If he didn't if he sent Tarita first and not Salamence, the Mian Shao wouldn't be in person's range. So yeah, basically this is all about conditioning. Sometimes when you have when you're in such a tough spot, you have to condition your opponent into like assuming from the way you play that you have certain sense while you do not have you, you it's just a blood basically, right? That's the idea. We will just pull the massive bluff. The the way he played it, he really made it seem like this Tarita was was scar from the beginning. And it was is it was such a creative way to take out the Mian Chao from the game, which was such a threat to his side. The sad the sad part of, about this story is that we were actually still lost the game. Because at this point well a, a few turns later we'll I'm just gonna show the rest of the battle. Rui is actually too far down and he doesn't have the proper threat to deal with blue because Celebi is completely walled by Itran, Londoris is walled by Slowbro, Rotom is walled by Rotom. Well, Rotom C is almost dead actually. Rotom Rush could have done something, but later in the battle is gonna switch into Itran and take a burn from Fire Blast, which pretty much makes it useless. I know I'm spoiling at this point, but yeah, it's, it's not what matters about this game, it's not the final result. I mean, yeah, obviously if you're playing, you care more about the final result than making a solid play. But, yeah, we're just trying to uh, to analyze a creative way to deal with a threat that is so, like, such a thorn in your side. And sometimes you have to pull those kind of bluffs. It's something you don't really think about because, like, it looks so risky for you. Your opponent could call you out of it and uh, just, like, attack and kill you. Or maybe you don't want to risk it in general, yeah. But in situation like Rura here, when you have no other option, you have to you sometimes have to get creative with your place. You you really tr you you really are gonna try to think of every possibility. And pursuit in general, for example, is a really great way to force plays or like to create scenarios that you wouldn't necessarily think of. But could make you win. Another example, I do not have the replay on my hand, on hand, but when you use pursuit on a team, typically you don't think about like, uh, typically, sorry, you think about removing pursuit weak Pokemon. So let's say you're using just uh, pursuit Tarantino in black and white, you're removing Latios for your Kaleo, right? That, that's the main reason you would use pursuit. But the fact that you have the move at your disposal. You can create, you can like create game scenarios where it's gonna open a wind pass that you wouldn't think of when building. So we had an example here where Choice Man Tarita managed to take out a Miencho through clever plays and bluff. Uh, another games that I had in mind was was like when Brofist played a World Cup game and pursued a Weavile in Oas with Pursuit uh, Sizo, I believe, or it was Pursuit Tarita. Because Revival was pretty much the only thing that could break him. And since Revival pretty much to switch out against Sizor or Tyranitar every time if it's looked if it's locked on the wrong move, you can pursue it to the point where it can it cannot come on the on the battlefield anymore. And yeah, you create a win pass out of nowhere. I remember a SPL game of mine. Actually I can find it probably. Uh, let me think. Let me do uh, nope. <laughs> Sorry, I'm struggling for no reason. So I'm gonna show you another replay of mine. That was from SPL2. Uh, that was a SPL8. And I will close the videos on this part. Uh, yep, okay. 
So I was playing Jade. I'm gonna remove the damage calc. I was playing Jade for the week one of SPL in black and white too. And for, so I have a real team, I know it looks ridiculous, but I had a clear idea in mind when I used it. It still was ridiculous, but anyway, you might notice from the pre team previews that Brelum pretty much like tear me, tear me apart. It prevents Riolu from uh, doing its thing, aka priority copycat because Brelum has a faster priority for Mac Punch. It one shot Jelly Sand, it kills each one with Mac Punch. This was offensive Brelum anyway, by the way. It removes Alakazam Sash. And Skarmory is isn't mean to stay on a isn't mean to stay because it's a an offensive lead variant. I actually lose each one anyway. The point isn't to showcase the battle, it's to showcase clever play uh, like clever creative plays and some kind of bluff bluff that you can pull to create win condition for you. I'm just gonna skip. So this is the same situation as earlier. You will see why. So I'm, I'm keeping Jelly Sand because it's the win con. I'm sacking the real because it, it's not gonna do anything at this point. And so I need Volume Dead basically, but I cannot. I, so Alakazam has already lost its Sash earlier, so I cannot send it. It's gonna die to Mac Punch. The thing is, Weavile actually threatens the kill through a faster priority from Ice Shard. And I can use this to my advantage by actually pursuing the Breloom. If, when you use Pursuit, you do, we are not thinking about pursuing a fighting resist like Breloom, right? Or Mianchao earlier. But you can create this kind of play. And if I can remove Breloom from the battle, Jelly Sun is suddenly looking really good to win, right? So actually, I, I went back to Jelly Sun on the Kaldeo. I sacked Skarmory. He spores, no big deal, he kills, uh, he kills Breloom. And yep, pursued it again. And just like this, the Breloom was removed in battle, and a win pass was created for Jason to win, out of nowhere. The sad story is that eventually, I think I missed a Will-O-Wisp and I die for, to Ferrothorn. Later. Oh, wait, wait, what happened? Oh no, I get crit on the turn I... Uh, I wisp it, yeah, when Jellystone could have won. But yeah, the idea is that get creative, make sure you think about like every possible line of play. Watching games, when you see those kind of unusual uh, turns, uh, will make them stick in your mind. And this is why I think this is like the best play of all time to me. Not only was it perfectly executed by, by Ruber, like everything I explained earlier by sending Salamence first, then sending Tyranitar, so me and Shao take the cheap damage as in Pursuit range. But it was so creative that it gave me inspiration and it made me think, wow, even if it looks I'm losing, if it looks like I'm losing, I still I still have some like tools at my disposal. Maybe I can bluff something. Maybe I can like try to do this and do that, and it's gonna create a win pause out of nowhere. And trust me, there are so many games where even if it <laughs> didn't look like I was gonna win ever, I, I just found a way. And I'm not making this about myself because I've seen many player, players do this. Create win paths out of nowhere just by being creative, bluffing. So yeah, don't give up. Sometimes I've won game I thought were lost already. I was really close to forfeit, but I didn't. And somehow, just by like really playing uh, <laughs> balls to the walls, yep, you can create, you can. Uh, emerge victorious when you shouldn't be technically I guess so I think that's gonna wrap the video incredible battle uh, even like <laughs> it's still so fun to watch those teams and uh, those names because it's so long ago but we're still playing the same game right and the same tier sometimes but yeah go out there get creative think about through every possible options and uh, you'll get better results I hope you have enjoyed this video and have a good day.